Hey folks, this is Arun Thiraviyam and I am a simulation product specialist with Go Engineer. It's 2018 and SolidWorks is at it again. With new functionality added every year, I wanted to take a couple of minutes to introduce you to the new topology optimization function in SolidWorks simulation. Now topology optimization is a technique that removes material from a user-defined shape or design space in order to maximize the performance of the shape. Performance here could mean either maximizing stiffness to weight ratio, minimizing displacement, or a combination of the two for a given set of loading conditions. Since this relies on concepts utilized in strength of materials, it becomes the perfect FEA problem. Here we have a solid cantilevered beam that is hinged at the two locations and is designed to carry about 5 megapascals. This translates roughly to about 2000 pounds. Now, running a topology optimization problem is similar to any static structural analysis. Grab the simulation add-in and set up a new study. Notice the new simulation study grouping. Now the topology study falls under the design insight group. Once the study is created, you will proceed to set up the problem as you would any static analysis, right clicking your way through the tree. Now let's assign an alloy steel material to the bracket. Next, let's fix the locations on the bracket that are hinged. Finally, apply the loading conditions. In our case, a 5 MPa pressure will be applied to the indicated face. After you're done with the essentials, you will need to define the optimization problem. So let's get into goals and constraints. Now the goal in these optimization tools is usually minimizing compliance that is implemented in the form of maximizing the stiffness of the component. And the constraint here will be the mass. So the problem here is to find how you can get the most stiffness while removing about 60% of the existing mass. Next manufacturing controls. You can impose restrictions on where and how the material is removed. Although the resulting shapes are mostly suited for additive manufacturing, they can be tailored to suit traditional subtractive manufacturing methods as well, such as casting, milling, or stamping. Now let's start by adding preserved regions or keep out areas. Now I want to make sure the material removal is restricted around the whole locations to maintain its assembly. Now it is important to note here that with SOLIDWORKS topology, there is a predefined keep out zone around areas of load and constraint applications. I'm just doing this explicitly to control the depth of these keep out areas. I'm going to apply a 1mm depth here. Now you can toggle the geometry preview to visualize this. Next, let's specify the demold direction. This restriction can be applied if the component is casted or injection molded in the case of plastics. Selecting the pull direction in this case, the edge of the bracket will automatically determine the center line. In the absence of this constraint, the material removal might be directed towards the center of the model rather than the sides. Now to further add stability to speed up the analysis, you can now impose symmetry. Now this component is clearly half symmetric about the XY plane. So a plane will have to be predefined in SOLIDWORKS for this definition. Now I have already done this and I'm going to pick this from the feature tree. Now this isn't an essential requirement but might help with the calculation speed with this specific problem. Let's finally mesh and run the analysis. Now it is important to note that the mesh size here is driven by the constraints you have added to the problem. So don't be surprised if you have really small elements in the problem. Now the solver uses an iterative convergence process during the solution phase for the goals and the constraint to achieve an optimum design and hence their values will affect the final shape. Now you can monitor this convergence process as well. Once the solution is converged, you have a final optimized shape. When the analysis is complete, you can use some of the inbuilt post-processing options to figure out how much material can be removed and where they can be removed from.
You could also export the STL file that can be used for 3D printing or to generate a parametric shape. Now here is the optimized version of the model I generated by using some of the standard features in SOLIDWORKS using the optimized model as a reference. It is customary to test the final shape of the model with the same boundary conditions. We are doing this because in topology study we only consider the order of the load application and not the absolute magnitude. Now here is the final stress distribution and you will see that we are still well over the factor of safety for this material. As a bonus, I have set up a shape optimization analysis as well with the design study tool, just to compare the results versus what we got from the topology study. Here I have a slot cut out in the bracket controlled by three dimensions. Now I am going to vary these three dimensions across a range and determine a final design that has a minimum factor of safety of 2 and has the least amount of mass as well. Again, we get a design that has about 40% less material without compromising its initial strength. Here's a little slide comparing the three designs we get from this process. Now the topology optimization tool yields a higher weight reduction with a significantly greater strength. Now an ideal approach to this problem would be using a combination of both these tools to create lightweight designs. Now these optimization tools take the guesswork out of the design process and answer the question of how we should be optimizing our products for traditional or additive manufacturing methods. Again, this is Arun Thiraviyam. I hope you found this video useful and um, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.